Right, right, right. By March 2004, the first set of wings are nearing completion in Broughton. The fuselage parts are almost ready to leave northern France and Germany for the final assembly line in Toulouse, where everything will be joined together. Carrying such large objects thousands of miles is a major task in itself and requires one of the most complicated and expensive transportation systems ever devised. The parts will travel by road, river and the sea in a logistical dance that has to fit together perfectly and work first time. The fuselage, wings and tailplanes will be carried by ship from the factories in Germany, Britain, France and Spain, converging on the port of Poyac near Bordeaux on the west coast of France. From there they'll be loaded onto barges that will carry them 59 miles up the river Garonne. But still the journey isn't over. A fleet of lorries will haul the parts by road the last 152 miles to the brand new factory in Toulouse. It's a highly complex scheme that's never been attempted before. And it starts in Hamburg on the 24th of March 2004, as the first finished fuselage sections of the giant airliner emerge into the light of day. The parts are carried on purpose-built, radio-controlled, self-powered low loaders. Each one has 96 wheels and can travel at a maximum speed of 6 miles per hour. The factory is just a few hundred yards from the purpose-built dock where the cargo ship waits. Now begins a 970-mile voyage through some of the busiest shipping lanes in the world to the west coast of France. Thankfully, the weather is perfect. In Britain, a few days later, the wings begin their journey. For the UK team, it's a significant day. After the last two months of preparation, and the previous two years of planning, we've actually got the moment now when the wing's going. So it's an exciting time, and it's what people here have looked for for many, many months. Stage one of this thousand mile trip is to use another low loader to carry the wing a mile from the factory to the nearby River Dee, where a barge is waiting. On the way is a narrow bridge, and there'll be just inches to spare. Very close. With the first obstacle behind them, the wing is ready to be loaded onto the barge. Now the dangerous tides on this treacherous stretch of river are the next hurdle to overcome. So it's not to be messed with this river. The tide's important because downstream there are three low bridges and beyond them lie constantly shifting sandbanks. Sail when the tide is too high and the barge will hit the bridge. Wait for it to fall and they could easily run aground. It's a real balancing act as to where you get off the, off the blocks and get under the bridge. Graham Harwood, the barge captain, has been studying the river for the last four months. He's hoping to clear the first and lowest bridge by just 50 centimetres. The first bit is the bridges, having a clearance of um, probably around about half a metre. You know, that's what we've set in. We've got to have half a metre clearance under the bridges, so the timing is of the essence like, you know. At this time of the month, the current is running dangerously fast. They haven't picked the right time for us because the tide is making probably about five knots. And, um, you know, we've got to compete with that later on. So not, not the best time of year, not the best tide for the first time it's been done, but I'm sure we'll manage it. We'll have to. The wing is gently manoeuvred onto the barge and the low loader carefully retracted. It's time to put all the theory into practice. The 
crew are constantly monitoring the clearance under the bridge, but as they approach, they realize the strong wind is holding the tide back. They might hit the bridge too soon, so Graham holds off for a few more seconds. Graham has judged it perfectly. Cutting it fine under the bridges has given him plenty of water under his keel for the remaining 13 miles of river. Soon he'll rendezvous with the ship that will take the wings to France. As the race to build the Airbus A380 gets underway, development continues all over the world. In Phoenix, Arizona, the aircraft's 16 escape slides are being made. Each one is custom built to meet stringent regulations and that means a lot of testing. Each slide is designed on computer and this is one of the most complex on the whole plane, the over wing slide. Today it will be tested for real, a critical time for the engineers. This is a brand new slide, um, it's fresh out of our prototype department and it's never been deployed, it's never been uh, slid on, but the pressure is on. The slide fits in a small pack which is mounted to a full size mock up of the plane. It allows passengers to get from a door here, across the wing to the ground, deploying almost as if by magic from here. Three, two, one! The regulations say that 850 passengers must be able to get out of the A380 in just 90 seconds. And the only way to prove the slide is up to the job is to use real human beings. 40 people will take part in the test and the first step is to get everybody warmed up. Everybody does it. Let's go. Let's do it. Ted Oney, who will be running the test, is wearing a rather special shirt. This is my lucky uh, Hawaiian shirt, of course. Every time I want to run an evac, I wear this shirt. So when people in the plant see me in this shirt, they know we're running an evacuation test. The aim of the test is to show the slide can hold up to the weight of the evacuees and allow a safe but speedy exit in an emergency. Our slide will have to have 40 people traverse down the slide in less than 17 seconds. That meets a rate, that meets our specified rate. So in the grand scheme of things, we'll be able to say that we could evacuate the entire airplane uh, within 90 seconds. Sliding can be dangerous, and part of Ted's job is to make sure nobody gets hurt. You're evacuating an aircraft, you need to do it quickly, but I want you to do it safely, safely because your safety is a high on my concern list, okay? Remember, getting out of that aircraft, it's in a hurry. All right, we're gonna start in a minute, so put on your helmets, strap them down, let's rock and roll. Stop shaking these stairs. We've gone through literally a year and a half worth of development test to get to this point. If it doesn't work today, then we've, we've got to go back and redesign this line. This is what it's all about today. Okay, count down. Three, two, one, go. Come on, guys. Out the door. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go. 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 Although some of the volunteers stumble, nobody gets hurt. Oh, wow, 17 seconds. That was great. great. It's always good to get the first one. <laughs> yeah, it, was it. it was pretty good, you know. Somebody fell right in front of me. 
I had to jump over them because they were just too close. In these tests, the passenger's weight is the main consideration, so the engineers are allowed to use able-bodied volunteers. It's a good thing, because two hours of solid sliding are needed to prove the design. At the very end comes the most dangerous test of all. To simulate an evacuation in a rainstorm, the slide is sprayed with water. It's risky because now everything is much more slippery. As the water puddles on the floor of the toe end of the slide here, um, it's, it means the landing surface is slick. People are used to uh, landing normally and suddenly it's much more slippery and uh, if we don't do our job right, we get a pile of bodies at the bottom. Go, 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 go! Job, everybody. Great job. I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> no way. I quit. Excellent, excellent. Evacuation levels. I'm very pleased. Yes. I'm happy with that. There was there wasn't a lot of bumping. Um, the slide did well. One slide tested, just 15 more to go.